All right, I'm back. We're still on page 236. Um, we're gonna do part D. I've already copied over some of this stuff because you need to use um, the thing from part B. You can like just look at that on your page, but uh, I do not have that ability. So I had to copy this stuff over. It might be useful for you to copy it too. I don't, I don't really know. Um, so we're gonna describe the intersection of a solid formed in part B and the plane Y equals one. So we wanna find the area of the region uh, including, actually, if you'll bear with me for one second, I think I'm going to need this again on the next problem. So what I'm going to do right now is actually like set that up just so that we can use it again. I don't waste a lot of time. Um, so, uh, uh, wait, what? Okay, we're good. We're, we're starting now and go, right? That's what, so if you're ever watching YouTube tutorials and you see someone like, do something and all of a sudden they're just like, boom, right? What you do is, and I don't really edit videos, but you um, sometimes have a bell like ding. And what you can do is you can then look through the audio track and you see this like huge peak and you know that that's a place where you like screwed up so you can go to that, cut the clip and then go back in and like edit it. So that's one of the things you'll do, but I don't really do it. But if I did, I would have like clapped there and been like, now it's perfect. Um, so that's a little like non pro tip because I don't know what I'm doing, uh, but you could potentially do that. Anyway, uh, intersect it with a plane y equals one. Find the area of the region, including units. All right, so y equals one. Let's put that in. Let's try to put that in. Put that in in the way that we can put it in. So uh, for me, that means drawing the radius. So if y equals one, uh, like that's going to be basically a line coming out of the y-axis, gonna be parallel to the x-axis because the x-axis is y equals zero. So I'm gonna get a circle. And uh, let me try to uh, dot that in. This is where it all goes wrong. Like it's like, if you can just imagine that, you're, you're already like good to go. And then I'm like, here, let me mess up the figure for you. I don't know, that's not terrible. Uh, all right, so if like what would the radius of this circle be well i have a proposition for you if y is equal to one and in our parametrics y is equal to v doesn't that just mean that v is equal to one i think it does mean that so if v is equal to one then i'm going to write parametrics for this so v is equal to one so it's going to be x y z, but we already said v is equal to 1, so y is equal to 1. If v is equal to 1, then this part, um, this part is going to be 1 minus 4 is negative 3 divided by uh, negative 2 is 3 halves. So I'm going to get 3 halves and then cosine of t. And then here, I'm going to get three halves sine of t. And am I done? Like I'm basically done, right? Uh, zero t to two pi. And that's looking pretty good, right? Like I knew it was gonna be a circle. I can see now that this is a circle. The radius is three halves and the area is nine, pi over four, pi r squared, and then units squared, stray marks, get out, um, units squared. And I think that's great, I think we did it. So you will find with these types of problems, and I should probably write this down. Uh, what am I writing? So, ooh, I still got like the uh, spacing on that one. Let me turn that off. Um, okay, so if, uh, sliced perpendicular to the axis of revolution, then you can pretty much do these problems by substitution. So just sub in and then think about it. So if I had been given that y is equal to three, I could have just made v equal three and it would have worked. If I made, if I was told that y is equal to four, I could make v equal four and then I would just get 
x is equal to zero, z is equal to zero, y is equal to four, the point zero, four, zero, which actually is the point um, on here that we're looking for. If I was told that v is equal to zero, then I would get two cosine theta, two sine theta. X is two cosine, z is two sine. That's a circle of radius two, which actually is the circle in the xz plane. So like this will definitely work. So that's that's like one of the big rules. If it's perpendicular to the axis of revolution, just sub into your parametrics for the surface and you can kind of see what's happening. Which kind of probably means that if it's not, then something else is happening. Uh, let's take a look at that. All right, so basically the same situation, except now we have the plane x equals one. This is more complicated. So I'm going to try to sketch it and see how that goes. It won't go well, I'm telling you now. So x equals one is maybe like here. And then we have to like draw what's happening, right? So x equals one is actually a plane, right? It's not just x equals one. It's not just in the xy plane. It's like a plane, a vertical plane parallel to the yz uh, plane. So can I draw a little more? Maybe. I mean, go like up here and then go like here and then like here, whatever, right? It's like that plane. That plane is cutting a cone. What do we know about planes that cut cones? They create conic sections. So this is gonna be some kind of conic section. Your instinct, if you are like everyone who's ever done this, is to say that the conic section in question might be a parabola, which it's not. Um, let me like sketch it a little bit. And then we're gonna do, ooh, am I still spaced out? I am. I kind of like the way that looks, but I also hate it. Just like a lot of things in life. It's gonna be kind of, Kind of like that, maybe. All right, so it's actually gonna be a hyperbola. How are we gonna get that? Well, we're gonna do something, we're gonna go like a little far afield and then we'll like come back. I'm looking at my parametrics and I see that X has something to do with um, cosine and Z has something to do with sine. And in general, in life, you know, in general, in life, when you run into this situation, so if you see sine of t and cosine of t, oftentimes what you want to do is try squaring and adding. Because sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. So let's see what happens if I do that. So I'm going to go over. Let me get a different color. I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna use this and this. I'm gonna square both of them and add them together, right? So on the left-hand side, I'll have x squared and z squared and I'm adding them. So I'm going to say, like I'm right from the start, uh, I'm gonna say that it's x squared plus z squared. Ooh, why are you making a y? z squared. And then that's gonna equal, what happens on the right? Well, you get the quantity v minus four over negative two squared cosine squared plus stray marks ah. and then uh, it'll happen again v minus four over negative two squared it's weird until you start doing this you don't know what's going to drive you insane for me it's stray random marks i cannot stand them they're like all over the place and they're, I like can't help it. Okay, look at what we just wrote. There's a V minus four over negative two squared in both things. You can factor that out. I mean, I'm obviously gonna do something with that, but bear with me, cosine squared. Is it obvious? I don't know. Probably obvious. That negative two is probably driving everyone insane. Like you may have chosen to simplify that like ages ago. Okay, so I have this. Cosine squared plus sine squared is one. So this becomes x squared plus z squared equals, uh, all right, I'm gonna do v minus four squared over four. So far, so good, maybe. Um, let me just clarify that this equals one. And now, 
let's look at uh, what what is going on, right? So uh, if you look, you can see that y is equal to v, and there's a v in this thing. So at this point, I'm going to get x squared plus z squared equals the quantity y minus 4 squared over 4. OK, that's crazy. This is, this is eliminating the parameter. Except we eliminated two parameters, because we got rid of t and we got rid of v. Eliminating the parameters. And that's awesome. That's a cool skill to have. Anytime you have um, parametrics like this with sine and cosine, give it a shot. See what happens. Uh, it's pretty cool. So now let's do the actual problem. We were told that x is equal to 1. So if x equals 1, um, new color, I guess. I don't know. OK, so if x equals 1, then I'm going to get 1. And then I guess I'll go back to this plus z squared equals what? I don't know. y minus 4 squared. I wonder how long this video is. I feel like I'm going for a while here. Um, although I just have a sense I'm always going for a while because I'm recording a lot in a row, like you can tell by the shirt pretty much. Um, OK, so what is this? This is a hyperbola, right? So rearrange it, and I'll get uh, y minus 4 squared over 4 and then minus z squared. So I'm really subtracting z squared from both sides equals 1. Stray mark. Come on. Let's write parametrics for this. OK, so what are the parametrics? Uh, x is definitely 1, right? That was given. So x is 1. I got really nervous there because I thought all of a sudden I was like, this was a y equals problem, and, and, but it wasn't, thankfully. Uh, y has to go first, so y, y goes first, so it's got to be with tangent. Oh my god, it's got to be with secant. Did I do that in that other video too? Is that it? Like all of a sudden today I can't do this anymore? Z equals. Okay, so y has to go with secant because it goes first. So it's going to be uh, 4 plus 2 secant of t. And I'm going to say t can go 0 to 2 pi. Like you can, it, it you don't need that. Uh, you can do less, but I'm just going to stipulate that it is. And then uh, z is actually just tangent. And that's it. So if you look at the question, it's kind of snarky because it's like, good luck at the end. Well, here you go. It's a hyperbola. We got it. Hyperbola. All right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to risk it. I'm going to go to GeoGebra. I'm going to graph this, see what happens. I'm going to graph several things. OK, so let me uh, switch my share over to GeoGebra. And I'm definitely start a new page. So what can I do? I got like things popping up here. Leave this page. Never save anything. You should always save things. I never save anything. Just the tragedy of the amount of work that I've done, gone. All right, first thing I'm going to graph is that like eliminated one. I'm going to graph, uh, well, actually, no. First thing I'm going to graph is the surface. Surface. All right, so this is another one where I feel like I'm going to say, I'm going to say, if you were only here for the notes, I guess you can leave. The last time I said that, it turned out I was wrong. Well, I wasn't wrong that you could leave. You could leave whenever. Uh, but I had done the problem wrong. So if you had left, that probably wasn't great. And then uh, sine of t. Uh, t go well uh v i should do first i guess z v goes from zero to four and then t goes zero to two pi and we see that awesome now let me do the one where i eliminated the parameter so i got the quantity y minus four squared over i'm gonna be so sad if this doesn't work minus c squared the concept is sound like i'm confident that that part was right this part that is definitely not right. Why is that wrong? Why is do 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 do? That was a cone. This is x squared 
It's one. That's where z squared. X squared. And it and then that. Oh, you know what it is? I got it. Oh my gosh. That was it. Like, I don't know what I look like when I'm looking down. I imagine like I'm starting to sweat or whatever. I graphed the wrong thing. I was supposed to graph x squared plus z squared um, equals the quantity y minus four. I mean, this could still end up wrong. Four. There you go. Oh, that feels good. What I accidentally did was I accidentally graphed um, at the bottom where we, we found the hyperbola. I accidentally graphed that. Um, what I meant to graph was above that when we had just eliminated the parameter. And that gave us this. This is the equation of cone. So if you have the parametrics for a cone, you can eliminate the parameter and find uh, the rectangular equation, which is awesome. So it always just involves squaring and adding the things that have sines and cosines. So, so far so good. And this is where it could all go wrong. So curve one comma four plus two secant of t. If I got this wrong, my guess would be that I got it wrong the same way that I got the other one wrong. Because sometimes in the same day, I will make the same mistake over and over again. There we go. That's my intersection. Pretty nice. So like technically, I should be limiting this so that I'm only seeing a little part of it but that kind of ramps up the difficulty like quite a bit. Um, so I don't want to do that in this video, but if you zoom out, you can see the other part of the cone is also getting hit by this hyperbola, but uh, good deal. All right, so that's, it's, this is a, a really good example. And I think what you could do is you can make up your own, just make up any line that cuts through the first quadrant and like makes a triangle and try to do the problem over again, like rotate it around the y-axis, cut it with a couple of values, like y equals something, x equals something. You could also cut it with z equals something if you're feeling up to it, and uh, see what happens. But I am gonna end this here, and I'll be back with uh, more stuff. So I'll see you then.